Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Celebrate now this next Sunday of ordinary time. We uh, this week is the prayer, uh, the week of prayer for Christian unity, as the opening hymn mentioned. The working together. It's because tomorrow, or sorry, Monday would be the feast of the conversion of St. Paul, or is the, his feast day. And that what we seek, all of us, is to turn more closely to Christ, to be united in Christ. That our gospel is another calling of Christ as well, inviting us to reflect as we prepare to celebrate this Mass on our own response to that call of Christ. To lift up uh, our need for forgiveness and mercy, to ask for strength and grace. And so, brothers and sisters, we take a moment, as we call to mind our sins, to help prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> city of Nineveh and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. 
When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world, in its present form, is passing away. The word of the Lord. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They, were, they too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Simon and Saul were not good Christians. Saul actually wasn't even a Christian at all. It's ironic then that we see them as two of the pillars of the church. We know them better, of course, by their names, Peter and Paul. But the scriptures help us to know them before they became Peter and Paul, um, to help show us what it is, I think, to be a Christian. What does it mean to follow Christ? Simon, of course, as we hear in the gospel here, was the fisherman, the brother of Andrew. We see very clearly his faults, his fears and his doubts. You know, in the scene that comes in the, later in the, the gospel where He's fishing, and they want to, uh, Jesus invites him to cast his net into the other side. And he basically says, well, we already tried that, Lord. It's not going to work, but I guess we'll try it. You know, it's kind of this, 
this doubt about this, this moment. Of course, the greatest moment of, of his kind of fear and doubt taking over of the time in the Passion where he three times denies Christ, that he even knows who he is. A timid and fearful um, sort of uh, temptation that he had to fight against. But then his new name that Jesus gives him, Peter, Rock, the sturdy one, the strong one, that it's something, of course, that's the work of God's grace in him. Saul of Tarsus, the great Pharisee, the one who didn't just disagree with the Christ and the Christians, but sought to actively root them out through violence to destroy what he saw as this uh, turning away from what uh, he understood as the Pharisees as the will of God. Instead, getting knocked down on his way to the road uh, to Damascus, coming to encounter the words of Christ, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Coming to take on the new name Paul, which in Latin, the Paulus is small, little one, humble one, uh, we probably would say most accurately. Going from one that was filled with anger, vengeance, uh, pride, to, again, the taking on the name Little One, the work of God's grace in him. I want to kind of look at three different aspects that we really see in the gospel here that we see in their lives as well. What does it mean to be a Christian? But first is to recognize that we've been called, that our life is not random, that our situation in our life is not an accident, that there's a purpose to our life and there's a meaning to where we are in our life right now. That we can often see it with maybe frustration, resentment. I wish I was here. I wish I was there. I wish this wasn't the case. I wish that was the case. But that Peter and Paul, or sorry, Peter and or Simon in the boat, Paul on his road to Damascus, were where they encountered the voice of Christ, calling them to follow him. That we have been called. We can think of it in our baptism. We can think of it in our, our vocation, uh, whether married life, or consecrated life, or Christ priesthood, or in single life, wherever it may be, we can think of the way that God calls us in a state of life, but then, of course, even the very practical, particular aspects of our life. That, that we need to always remember, I think, that purpose. To live with a purpose and intention to our life. That as Christians, we are called. We are not just in our spot as a random place, but in response to the call of Christ. That second, that as Christians, we're able to set aside things that aren't essential. That Paul, or sorry, Peter, Simon, has to set aside clinging to his neck, to his life as a fisherman. That he's called to something different. Paul having to set aside his uh, kind of um, holding on to this anger, this vengeance, this, this way of life that he had embraced. That they're able to set those things aside. Paul, we see, express that very clearly in our second reading, that he uh, speaks of those using the world as not using it fully, those buying as not owning. In other words, trying to express the aspect that we talk about as a renunciation, but in fact is actually an essential aspect of freedom. Freedom requires being able to say no to things that aren't as important. That the real freedom we want is not just to say yes to every single thing that comes to our mind or our attention, because that's going to lead us into kind of a slavery of just to whatever happens to be the, the temptation of the moment. But we want the freedom to be able to say no to what's less important, uh, because only then are we really free to say yes to what's most important, to prioritize things in our life, to live according to what's the most important things. It's good as we're getting close, scarily close to Lent. Lent is only a few, less than a month away. It's crazy to think. But to think about that, what is the freedom that we desire? You know, Christians are called to live in the freedom of the children of God. But this freedom um, is the wisdom of the cross. The cross in which Christ is free to say yes and persevere in his yes of love to God and neighbor because he's willing to set aside everything else and is not tempted to kind of renounce it as Peter did when he was acting out of his fear, um, afraid of things that were less important, and so renouncing his love of Christ, which was the more important. And then finally, I think Christians also are able to, however, despite that renunciation, build on the past. What I mean by that is we're able to see in our history, the good, the bad, the ugly, seeds of God's preparing us for our mission. 
that we're able to transform the things of our life, the gifts and talents that we have, into things for good. That Jesus uses this turn of phrase. They were fishermen, and he says, come after me, I will make you fishers of men. Taking their past, taking who they were, and in their turning to him, not obliterating it, but transforming it. Not saying that what you know, their kind of natural gifts or interests are, aren't important, but saying that they can be transformed. They can be put to the service of good. Of course, the zeal that Paul had when he was in his life as Saul, his life of uh, attacking, taking what he had previously used to tear down, but then turning that zeal to building up, to saying, what if you use those gifts that you have instead of attacking again and tearing down, what if you use that same energy, that same zeal to build up, to ground it in humility and to lead people to encounter me? That they use the gifts that they had for the good of the gospel. So we can think in our own life, kind of what are those things in our life where they can be kind of transformed for the love of God, the love of neighbor? What is it in our personality? What are those kind of personal gifts that we have, whether we've used them for good or for more maybe selfish or, or uh, unimportant reasons, how can they be transformed? How can we offer them to the Lord uh, to lift them up? Again, I think these are three key things of what does it mean to be a Christian, what we see in the life of Peter and Paul, what transformed them from Simon and Saul into who they were um, in the end of the Gospels, that they knew that they were called, that that was in the core of their identity. They were called by Christ, called where they were. That they were able to set aside the things that they had clung to in the past that held them back, to embrace in freedom the things that were most important. And that they were able to transform what the natural gifts they were given by the supernatural grace of God into something new, something life-giving. So we celebrate these things this week, and we pray in our own life, how do they apply to us? How can we better respond in our identity as Christians? Please stand. As we ponder on this question of our faith, we ask the Lord to inspire us as we profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the spirit of faith, let us raise now our prayers and petitions. That Christians, compelled by the Word of God, strive for reconciliation and unified joy in the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of the world act with wise compassion, promoting a preference for the poor of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That unborn children, the terminally ill, and those condemned to death be clothed with the same seamless garment of the right to life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the poor and the needy feel God's loving hand in their lives through the love of God's people. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That members of this assembly hold one another in daily prayer and bring God's love to the sick and the homebound, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living and deceased, for vocations to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Martha Kaczynski, from whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the protection of the Church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God repeat him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince, the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world and seek the of the souls. Amen. Almighty God, we lift up our prayers and intentions. We ask that you hear and answer them according to your holy will, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, for to bring him is the sons. <laughs> summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession. Proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness and into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
remain holy, O Lord, is the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we bring, by sending down your spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, 
we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mentioned this next weekend, the 31st, is the start of Catholic Schools Week. We will be having our Joe's Fried Chicken uh, fundraiser. It'll be different than last year, obviously. So, uh, what we'll do this year is it will be very much like we did the Fall Fest. Um, the chicken will be cooked at Knights of Columbus, but then we'll serve it at St. Malachi School. Um, you can call in, or there's going to be kind of an easy walk in, carry out sort of system. Kind of a one way line as you go through, um, you can order and, and different things like that. And appreciate if you're able to help with that or with your prayers. Yeah, especially now, I think the uh, as we face challenges, you know, this past year, the more and more the importance of uh, the creativity and the mission of building up, strengthening in mind, body, spirit, soul, um, to be able to to face the challenges ahead of us. So appreciate especially your prayers and support uh, for our work and our mission um, at St. Malachi School. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is In Christ There is No East or West.